Who y'all any ask for more? Yeah. That, that, that's kind of weak. So, who y'all any ask for more? Who y'all? Good morning. Uh, thank y'all for what you do out here, and thank you very much for coming out and uh, and joining us this morning and, uh, and and giving us some good feedback and asking some great questions. I'm going to talk to you today about enlisted advancement selection boards and. The difference between enlisted uh, and officer selection boards is that the, the officer selection boards are controlled uh, beyond the uniform level, uh, they're, they're uh, statutory in nature, and the enlisted selection boards, uh, the authority lies with chief naval personnel. And, and, and I will tell you this, that uh, one of the things that we owe you and that the boss is 100% committed to is that this is as fair as any human process can possibly be. And, and I believe that 100%. I've been involved in many selection boards from uh, the process that previously existed, and then uh, I, I've been an NPC for the entire uh, process that occurred in 2000, uh, 19, uh, fiscal year 19, calendar year 2018. And, uh, and we continue to improve this process, and, and it, is, uh, you know, it, it is as fair as it could possibly be, and, and we, I believe that we get it right. Um, and with me today uh, is Master Chief Matt Lucas. He is our PERS-8, one of our board sponsors. And if there's any hard questions, I'm going to uh, flip them over to him. All right? So eligibility questions. The, there's two NAV admins put out every year for the, for the E7 uh, cycle. The E7 cycle starts with the NAV admin announcing the exam, which is already out for uh, the January exam. And then there's also another NAV admin that talks about the dates for the selection award. And then we put out the NAV admins also for the A and E9. <clears throat> when those come out, it is this individual sailor's responsibility to verify your eligibility. And then if you look at the bottom bullet there, you can sign up for your profile sheet change notification via the Navy Advancement Center website. So if you're not doing that already, I encourage you to go ahead and uh, log on and sign up. There's two different orders that go out. The precept is the overarching guidance from CMP that tells us uh, what's going to happen during the entire board season. And this is available on the NPC website uh, for you to view. So there's no secret about what you've got to do and what this board is going to be looking at. And then the convening order gives specific guidance to each individual board. And again, that's also available for you to view. And you can take a look and see what folks are looking for at the board. Convening order. Whenever we go set the selection boards, uh, we are directed to look at the fully qualified folks and then the best qualified. Take a look at the best qualified there. What is the priority of the collateral duties? And all the way down to the bottom of the floor, correct? So if you're spending more time on your collateral duties than you are on leadership impact, and institutional technical expertise in doing your primary mission, then that might be a signal that you're getting wrong. So uh, take, take a look at that, take a look at the, uh, at the board precepts, and you'll see uh, that it reflects that right there. And listen, the career paths, they're no secret. They're available through my Navy portal. Uh, it's a great thing for you to take a look and see, measure yourself to the career path to see uh, if, if you're on par with where you want to be. So my Navy portal, you can avoid, uh, review your OMPF. You can review all of the stuff, and you have visibility to everything that the board uh, can has visibility to as well. And then your letter to the board. Uh, so the, your ESR, this is what the, the folks at the board get to see. And you can view that as well. Communicating with the board. So there's some do's and do nots. This is your only method of communication with the board. Your letter to the board is pretty important. Uh, and it is important to not send stuff that you don't need to send. If you look there, it talks about, talks about do not send duplicates of items that are already in your OMPF. Every year, we get packages that are 50, 60, uh, hundreds, of, sometimes up to 100 pages of stuff. People send in their entire record. Some people send in pictures. Uh, I can go on and on about the things that people send in. Uh, we, we, don't, we don't need to see, the, see a picture of it uh, with the aircraft. We know that it's all written down, but it's, um, yeah, and, and then, of course, the bottom bullet there, don't wait until the last minute to send it in, okay? You can verify uh, via papers online whether we've received your package or not, and 
then you can also call my name career center and they will verify whether or not you're hired. Adverse information. So the board has visibility to adverse information. And with, there is there is cases where the board uh, there is cases where the board does not have access to the adverse information. Maybe it is something that just occurred. So occasionally, whenever the matter when the matter comes up after the selection board process uh, selects someone, uh, you'll see that somebody is on hold. Correct? You guys have all seen that before. You've had a ship made, or maybe you yourself has been on hold. <coughs> um, whenever that occurs. We have to adjudicate the situation and before we make a recommendation up to CMP of whether or not you're gonna get advanced. And many times that involves your security clearance. And those are the ones that take a lot of time. Uh, we, we typically, especially for the Chiefs of Panther Board, we got everybody's, everybody's pulled that we could possibly get adjudicated before September 15th so we could pin those folks that we, that we wanted to get through that process that we knew that they deserved it and we just had to tie up those ends. Um, the one thing we couldn't get done is the, the whenever there's security clearance in, in question. So those are the, that's the one piece that we don't have control over. We have to let Don Cap take care of that piece. Some of the things that board members cannot discuss. So if you have some folks uh, at your command, you know typically your CMC has went and set a selection board. Uh, they can discuss with you uh, ways to improve yourself. They can discuss and give you recommendations, but they can't talk about these things right here. And I'll open it up for questions. So the question is, is with the uh, with, with the Navy ramping up our um, our inventory and, and with increasing higher engineer, will it will it drive up? Up or down? Up. That that is a that is a that is an excellent question and it's one that we can only predict. So uh, we we increase the higher tenure because um, we want to keep the talent around a little bit longer. We have folks, uh, you know, I'm I'm 47 years old. I've been in the Navy 27 and a half. And I think I got more than two and a half more good years in me. Uh, so the boss is now at least a little bit longer. And I think that we are, so we're going to keep the power a little bit longer. It's going to allow us to, uh, it's going to allow us to better manage the fleet. Uh, as long as people are still deployable and able to go back out and do a hard job, we're going to keep them a little bit longer. Um, we don't predict that the, the uh, advancement opportunity is going to go down because of the higher Because we're in and we're increasing as a force across all the rates. Almost every rate out there is experiencing an increase in, uh, in, in billets and an uh, increase in uh, So it's, it's I, I don't see that it is uh, it's going to go down. Yeah, of course, that's exactly the right place. Give you some rough numbers. You know, uh, if you look at the sum total.
gentleman back here. Good morning, Master Chief Postal Moore with CBW2. Uh, with the backlog of security clearance, although I know you don't, you don't control it, but with the backlog of security clearance, if they're not completed by August, would that affect the selection of a personalized uh, name? So the question is uh, with the backlog of security clearances, um, and if it's not adjudicated by the limiting date, is that what you're asking me? Yes. If, um, if it's not completed or uh, by August, does that determine it at that first class? Great, great question. What will happen? They'll be placed on hold, and they have up to one year to get that adjudicated and still have the have their decision go up to CMP for a final decision where people say whether they're advanced or not. Yes. All right, so the first question was asked about uh, e-billing. We have a question uh, about uh, billing and how it's uh, done for an entity. The second question was asked about uh, IT years to keep people in or longer to uh, fill each other's position. So how is uh, how is the dancing going to go up to the seven so we're keeping people in place longer so there's no ability to fill these in? So, is your question uh, if, if we're keeping people longer, how, how, how are we still going to maintain? Well, how are we going to get more keeping the seven to keep people on the road longer? Okay, I, I, I think I understand your question. It is, it, so, even though we're keeping people longer, the amount of people, the total amount of people in your rate is also going up. So, you know, if if CMP adds X number of chief billets this year, we can't I can't grow a chief overnight. That chief has been grown over a period of average of ten to twelve years. So um, keeping people longer allows us to keep the talent at the right level. So um, it wouldn't increase it so keeping the higher making a higher tenure extended out actually changes the quality so we don't over promote as well. So does, does that answer your question? Then the, the, the total population is changing. So the effect of raising higher tenure and that percentage is going to stay longer doesn't have a negative impact because the overall number is getting larger. And as he, as he explained earlier in his uh, opening comments that we're um, we're funding a higher percentage of the Navy's billets in, in, in your community. So the number of the advancement opportunities are increasing and the number, the, the amount of EBA is increasing as well. Does that answer your question? Uh, yeah. All right. Any other questions? Any questions about the letters to the board? Uh, Master Chief Lucas is a great guy to answer any of those questions because he sees uh, all of them. Um, a mountain of paperwork comes in. Any questions about in that arena? Yes, sir. So, it's more about uh, all the talk about transparency and feedback. Why can't we know where we stand at in selection tools or notes from the board on where we can be? <laughs> well, um, I'll do my best to answer that question, and it is. Um, so if I told you that the only thing that stopped you from making chief last year uh, was a certain qual, qual X, whatever it is, what's the chances that you're going to focus on anything else next year? What's the chances that you're going to do the other 90% of the things that you did great last year? So we don't want to focus, there is no one thing at the selection board that gets anybody advanced. And we don't want anybody to focus on any one thing. So it is a broad wholesaler concept that everybody looks at. There's not one thing that's going to tank you and keep you from getting selected. And there's not one thing that's going to, that you should focus on to get selected other than your primary job and doing everything you can to support the mission of your command. So, it, 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 and by having those discussions and by sharing personal things, we can't have master chiefs that come set selection boards, come putting out the dirt that they read on your shipmates or that they read about you. Um, we, we just can't have that. So we have to keep the process. So the way we do it and the fact that we run a fair process and the fact that every single record these days gets looked at by everybody that's setting in that panel. 
Those sort of things aren't secret. They're not anything that we can't disclose. But what we can't disclose is I can't talk about Mass Chief Cross Office record whenever I come back to command. <coughs> that, that stuff has to be, that's PII. It is, uh, it, it is stuff that we just don't want to talk about outside the board of basics. That, that, makes, that, that makes sense to you? And, and, and as far as feedback, you know, the feedback is, you know, the, the, um, the precepts, uh, your career ladder, all that stuff is open for interpretation. The board, when I set a selection board, I don't get to decide the best uh, submarine ETs. I, I don't get to make that decision. There's guidance that tells me who I can select. There's guidance that tells me what's important. I don't get to decide that people who serve on a fast attack submarine are more important than those who serve on a ballistic missile submarine. I can't make that determination. Right? Um, I was told I could. So, um, <laughs> it, it, it is, um, it, all of that stuff is transparent to you. Um, but, you know, hopefully I answered your question as best as I can.